Welcome to worship on Good Friday, where we invite you to slow down over the stories of Jesus' final days. Each year, arriving to Good Friday means lingering over these texts that are sometimes painful for us to read, painful for us to consider and remember. But as we turn to these, we also remember that we call this day good. And we do that because in spite of how difficult it is to read these stories and to remember Jesus' agonizing death, today we also remember God's ultimate gift that comes to us through Christ's death. Those gifts of redemption and reconciliation, the gift of eternal life. But before we get there, before we get to that Easter joy, we must linger here. So today, as we worship, you'll hear scripture readings from the Gospel of John, alongside Pergolesi's Stabat Mater. Stabat Mater translates to at the foot of the cross, and it was written specifically for Good Friday from the perspective of Mary. We hope that on this day, it's meaningful for you. Together, on this Good Friday, let us worship God. Let's begin our service together with our call to worship. Please join me. On this Good Friday, we contemplate the good news of the cross, how Christ our Lord stretched out his arms to embrace a world of suffering and sin, how Christ our Lord stretched out his arms to save us. Come and see the beloved Son of God. He is high and lifted up. Come and see the ruler of the nations. He is high and lifted up. Come and see the Savior of the world. He is high and lifted up upon a cross. Let us pray. We stand near the cross, O God, disturbed, distraught, discouraged. Yet we gather here as disciples those whom Jesus loves. On this day of great solemnity, let us stand as witnesses to your great love for all the world revealed in the outstretched arms of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In and through Christ, we always pray. Amen. From the Gospel of John, chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police, the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you were looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into the sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had, who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people.
A reading from John 18, verses 19 through 32. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the guards standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to that wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Aeneas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And they asked him, you are not also one of, the, one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid a ritual of defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. And Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he would, was to die. Continuing with John chapter 18 and into 19. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. 
What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him in the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no cause against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the son of God.
Continuing from the Gospel of John chapter 19. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is Golgotha. There they crucified him and with two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. And then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but write this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the, Jew, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home.
John chapter 19, verses 28 and through 42. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scriptures, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate, to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the others who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also come to believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occur so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. With gratitude for words sung and spoken, let us close in prayer. God, on this most challenging day, be with us. Open our eyes to see the pain and suffering around us into which we might carry your loving presence. Help us to remember, to remember this day that through Christ, you are the one who meets us in our suffering. Walk with us, O oh God as we carry your story forward to Easter. In and through Christ we pray, amen. Friends, go in peace this day, holding these stories in your hearts until we resume our worship together on Easter morning. Thanks be to God, amen.